This is going to be a five minute quick look at the bike paths of Perth and on the left we've got the old and on the right we've got the new and you can see where they join there. This is on the freeway, a fantastic path which just goes for miles and miles and miles uh, and one problem I've actually had is I'm not used to riding long distances without stopping. I've been cramping after about 10 kilometres. But you can see there the clear delineation there between the old and the new. Um, one thing you will, I know this is speeded up, but if you ever see uh, people on Strava doing about 50 kilometres an hour along the freeway path, it's probably correct because the winds here are quite ferocious. Now I don't have a lot of or any bike footage because I'm missing that thing on the right, which is a universal adapter. Uh, hopefully one will turn up soon and I can get some more on-path on footage. Here's one of the new paths, super wide, you could drive down it. I mean, here's Kings Park, it's almost the same width as, uh, as the road, absolutely fantastic. Um, Mount Henry Bridge, uh, this bridge was built I think back in the early 70s, and then they tacked on this walkway underneath it, which I think is a good idea, I don't know why they can't do this for the Anzac Bridge. Uh, beautiful view back there up towards the city and there's just bike paths everywhere. At the other end you've got Fremantle where they've got narrow bike lanes, so narrow the cyclists don't bother to stay in them. And I also noticed the drivers had a lot of trouble here staying in the car lane um, and they're often drifting over into the bike lane. The Fremantle bridges, terrible. It's like the Gladesville bridge except or maybe 10 centimetres wider, uh, not much chop. Where they do have, uh, well they're not shared paths, combined paths I guess, it's very very clear the bike paths are red and the foot paths are black or grey. Um, and they stick to it. Now this was quite interesting. Um, there's a bike path over there as you can see but most cyclists were actually on the road and I think the reason for that is firstly there's very little vehicle traffic. Um, it is faster, there's quite a few pedestrians using the shared path. There's a lot of big groups riding around in Perth. I mean there's just absolute pack after pack after pack of you know 20 or 30 people um, and I, I didn't get that today. Well and flies as well but uh, sticking to the road is often the rule even when there's a path. I guess that drive sends some drivers around the twist. Just just shows the foundations of this path where it's this kind of crushed limestone I think. Um, very effective, uh, works quite well. There's the, the paths are super smooth with no bubbling or rippling etc. You know Broughton Street with almost no one using it has already got ripples in it. There's these paths, some of them are years old and they're flat as a tack. This is one of the new crossings they've put in um, along the what they call the principal shared path between Perth and Fremantle, and uh, these crossings seem to work okay. It just you know it's just common sense. Um, this is one of many uh, treatments where uh, uh, pedestrians cross cycle paths or shared paths, and they paint everything green and put lots of signs in. Here's an idea for the NOS Council: drainage. See how the drain is round, and it's huge. So you can ride over it without your wheels getting stuck in it and obviously it can take away a lot of water. I mean Perth's supposed to be dry isn't it and they've put these massive drains in. Uh, but why can't we have these in uh, Sydney round uh, the Bay Run for instance. Yep there's the pelicans and the swans uh, watching everyone zoom past uh, and yes the view uh, over the Swan River is really nice it's fantastic. Um, well that gets a little bit hot uh, riding along there because there's no shade but you just you just go south for miles and miles and miles. I don't know how far south I could go without um, running out of puff. This is one of these little side paths leading back into the suburb. Um, now this is where I found the signage a little bit strange where okay it tells you Fremantle's that way and in the opposite direction it tells you Perth is going the other way but shouldn't that be on the side path? So when you walk up to the path the text is there. There's really kind of strange things like that with the way they've done the signage. I don't think they've thought about it too well. Um, there you go, hand cyclists. Uh, the paths are so good. Um, you know, you can use them even if you can't use your legs, and they're not interrupted by um, bollards and stuff like that. Where they cross the road, it's sensibly thought of. Here's going into the city. I did get a bit confused there, thinking that red stuff on the right was bike path. This is where the boardwalk goes around the water and a uh, good thing too because I went up this hill which this is why everyone goes down this hill um, because it's like 10% gradient or more and uh, I've, I saw a few people up the top puffing and, uh, and panting. Um, so once I get that cyclic accessory I'll be doing some um, more stuff from on the paths and uh, we can see the good, the bad and the ugly.